Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. For the delay, it's an unexpected technical problems are always happening, of course. First of all, uh, Ahsan, welcome. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahman ar-rahim. Rahmishrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlu luqtatan min lisani yafkuhu qawli wa ja'alli wazira min ahli haruna akhi ishtud bihi azri wa yashrikhu fi amri. Kay nusabbiha ke kathira wa nathkura ke kathira inna ke kunta bina basira. Wa salli allahumma ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa atba'ahi wa sallim. Rabbana ufir lana wa arhamna wa anta khairul rahimin. Amin. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. The mic is not on. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, last week, we just uh, follow the subject. Uh, last week, we studied last day this verse, uh, Araf 173, and uh, people. Uh, proposed as an or uh, suggested as an excuse that uh, their uh, forefathers taught them uh, this uh, tradition, which is shirk, uh, I mean, assigning divine power to creative beings. So uh, that is what we found it. We are following, we said it may work for an excuse for the non-believers and also it may work for believers as well, saying that, oh, I found my religion from my forefathers, it is Islam, okay, I'm following it. No, it must be our personal choice. And we stopped there. Now, uh, here, oh, Although we studied this verse, but this uh, this verse from Bakara 30, it قال رب كل الملائكة النجاعين في الأرض خليفة قالوا أتجعل فيها ما يفسد فيها ما يفسد كتما ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون when your Lord told the angels I am putting a successor on earth they said how can you put someone there who will cause corruption and bloodshed when, the, uh, when we celebrate your praise and, praise and pro proclaim your holiness. But he said, I know things, but uh, you don't know. It means he is going to appoint a caliph on earth, khalifa. It means every individual is a khalifa. So it means every individual has its own responsibility. That is why I, uh, I brought this uh, verse here. No one said that uh, Khalifa doesn't mean that uh, follows the tradition. If Khalifa follows the tradition, it cannot be the Khalifa. It means successor. Everybody has been given the quality of being a successor on earth of the uh, God's uh, representative on earth. It means using the God, uh, using the earth, or the universe, in the name of it is real owner. We are not the owners of the universe. We are not really allowed or uh, qualified to use the word as we want, but only in the name of the real owner of the universe. That is why some people may understand, misunderstand uh, uh, a caliph, a khalifa, as we can do anything we want because we are appointed to, as the people who are acting here as we want, freely. No, no, we are we are only a caliph. It means deputy, if you like. So, deputy general cannot do anything against the real general, or not the, the deputy general, maybe, uh, oh no, it, help me. Not the deputy is not a good word here. And acting on behalf of somebody. So we understand that we, we are expected to act on on behalf of the uh, creator of the universe, owner of the universe. So we cannot really use it as we want, only as 
the owner wants us to use it. But this is Caleb, but everybody is qualified for this position, individually. So we cannot say that, no, I'm just following my tradition. So even I was born in the most uh, pious family, still I have to decide about my own belief. I can inherit the culture. I can, I can learn how to pray, how uh, to do the things in this world, uh, and also halal and haram, the prohibited and also inject, uh, injections that we have to do, learn them, but believe, utilizing the universe and communicating through the universe with his creator is an individual matter. I cannot inherit I can inherit property, of course, uh, it is, everybody knows it, and I can in inherit culture, but I cannot inherit belief from my family background. And also those people who are born into or created into a non-believing uh, uh, family, they cannot say that my family are like this. They have to use their own human qualities because every human being is fully fledged to, to utilize the universe and uh, communicate with his creator. I think uh, we have to go fast because we studied the, these verses, these two verses, and he taught Adam, it means you and me, we said the names of all things, it means uh, really, oh, what is this names of all things? Yeah. Oh, all things, uh, I don't know. How could I? Uh, I copy paste from the uh, translations, but you cannot say all things. There is no things here. All names. It means I taught Adam all names. Of course, we know from the other verses of the Quran, names in the Quran is used only for names of the Creator. We all know that Esma'ul Husna. So names of the Creator. Names of the Creator means not only name by name, Ali or, or John or Muhammad, but uh, it's not the, uh, this is not the official name. It is uh, not one official, formal name for your status in the civil society. Everybody calls you Ahmed. But it is not that name. Ismail Husna is qualities of God, the creator. So we are all given the abilities to get to know our uh, qualities of our creator. So we have to uh, use them as the caliphs. That's why if caliph uh, Khalifa didn't know the quality of the, uh, the creator of this universe, real owner of the universe, the, uh, the caliph, the, the one wise chair, they say, the one who's acting in his name wouldn't know what to do. Do you, do you see this relation? No or no? Does it make sense? So if I didn't know the quality of the owner of this universe, how can I act? in his name in the universe as, a, as individuals. So uh, I had to be taught, if I am the caliph, I had to be taught the qualities of the creator. So well, God says on the following verse, uh, we taught uh, you, every Adam, everybody, Adam, uh, doesn't uh, dis uh, disqualify Eve, you know, or, or the other pair of Adam. So he he presented them to the angels and said, tell me the names of this, if what you say is true. So it means uh, angels said and every individual being. Let's take the example of uh, an army. So general, uh, first, uh, first top general, and there may be Luftons, Luftons, however they call majors, uh, 
other positions uh, in the uh, army, of course, every uh, the person, uh, the the uh, how do you say the small section in an army has it his own leader. Now think about it, and this leader has the power to act in that area only, in that regiment, only. But general acts, all of them, all of them. So angels are like in its own place, receives the command from uh, the creator and executes it as he received the command. And they say, look, I am completely qualified to do my job. And so, but they don't know that there are other regiments as well, <laughs> and endless regiments, in fact, because they are uh, they are not like human beings, uh, or fully qualified. They are qualified only in an area. For example, they're uh, a director of a branch of a company. So, director of the branch of a company doesn't know what is going on on the whole company. So human beings are given this quality to know what is going on in all aspects of the uh, creation. That is what uh, we see the difference between angel and human beings. So if you like, uh, uh, the human beings are like uh, general, uh, general in chief, or is it correct? General in chief, <laughs> who the, the top man. <laughs> uh, as far as his qualities are concerned, so we have to use them. We have no other excuses. Okay. Now we will study how uh, uh, that was the point, you know, because uh, the subject was how uh, we are going to reach the perfect uh, understanding of God. So uh, this uh, throne verse is uh, Ayatul Kursi is very famous uh, among the Muslims. Almost all of them know it by, def uh, by heart. So we will study this, how it, uh, this verse of the Quran presents God to us. As usual, we have uh, really studied uh, uh, on this subject a lot. Allahu la ilaha illahu, as uh, Allah introduces his proper name, if you like, his proper name, Allah, and then describes how I should get to know him. Be why? Because uh, he is the owner of the universe. I am a part of the universe. So a part cannot really uh, comprehend the creator, if you like, as a machine, a part of the machine, cannot really comprehend the engineer of the whole machine, because engineer of the whole machine, not of the nature of the machine itself. So that is why it is interesting. Quran describes it, la ilaha. He is, he is, so the God is he, la ilaha. There is no divine being. As if speaking to the part of the machine saying, look, if you want to know who made this machine, including yourself within the machine, of course, we know that machine represents the universe. Everything exists. Everything exists. It means created. So it means you cannot find the creator within the created thing. That is oh, it's important for us. Uh, we have to notice that what is going on in the world now, especially in the education area, the education area is basing all their arguments and uh, studies. Although we say, look, I'm studying what I see in the world. 
and I take them to the lab and investigate and how it is really working or I'm taking the machine or a piece of the machine, putting in the lab and I'm studying how it is made, uh, uh, working. So it looks so innocent. Yeah, the, you see, I am taking the fact, it means human beings see the universe itself. So a part of the universe taking the uh, part of the machine and putting it into the, as a, a, a conscious being, of course, human beings are conscious being. And also they can question how it is, how is it working? They can investigate because we have given the full capacity to use, utilize the universe. That is what the Quran said earlier on. And the owner of the universe reminds human beings that you can work within the universe, but you have to understand what, uh, how it is coming into existence and question whether all the actions, the pieces of the machine are doing can do it on their own. Do they have any quality to act in themselves? Like exactly like the, a piece of a, a computer. Exactly like. So do you think any, uh, for example, keyboard that we are dealing with, so any uh, uh, key on the board, keyboard, really doing it by itself? or it is made and put in this position by the whole, by the engineer of the whole machine, which one? So what they do, look, I am always pressing, for example, now I see the T key, T. I am always uh, pressing this key, which is T. Oh, in the screen happens T. No, this, I, will, I would call it straight logic. Oh, that then this uh, key is really doing it. So they say we don't need engineer anymore. Why? Or look for the engineer of it because T is. Uh, I mean, this key works for itself. The next key works for itself. It means what? Everything is working for itself. That's where they come up with uh, two options. Either. They are naturally like this, or they exist by themselves in this way. So they they use any kind of language. I don't know, it might have happened. We don't know throughout the years, the things are working. I don't need to go uh, billions of years ago, what, will, uh, what happened in the universe. I am seeing now, the things have no consciousness, by themselves, and they don't have they don't have any free will to choose. They are for, uh, made or uh, put in a position that they have to do what they are positioned in. They cannot do anything else. So Quran always describes God with what? La ilaha. We call it negation. I mean, this is not my invention. The Muslim scholars use the cell B. So this is negation. Why negating? How he is not, the creator of the universe is not like any part of this universe. Because any part of the machine is not like the engineer of the machine. We understand this because engineer of the machine has a completely different level of existence, should have a completely different level of existence, engineer of the machine. So I cannot really comprehend any existent being, which is uh, in this case, the creator of the universe, which, which must exist not like a created being because if he was, uh, or if we, if we could liken him to any part of this universe, he would be a created being. It is impossible to accept. We work on it, but 
of course, it, especially in uh, in this you know, last centuries, uh, maybe three, four centuries, people developed this materialistic and uh, naturalistic ideas that the things are happening by themselves. Do they? Do they have any quality to happen by themselves? So we have to question this uh, because they say we cannot take anything if it is not a part of the universe and put it in the lab and we cannot study there, we cannot measure it, we cannot weigh it, so we cannot really analyze it and we don't talk about it. But they don't stop there. The problem is they don't stop there. They say, so they don't say that, look, we, we don't know who the creator or make uh, originator of this universe is, but Further, they go even further, say, look, uh, I can explain how the things are happening. So I can understand that how I can go and study how the things are working. But do they act? Do they work by themselves? Do they have any quality to do what they are doing? but they are given these qualities by their creator, whoever created them, and employed in this position by their creator. They have to follow. They have to follow as they are created. But what they, are, they seem to be doing is as if they know what is going on, everything in the universe. That is why, how they seem to be acting. Again, well, is it easy? But this trick of language, naturally like this, what is nature? I always ask this question. <laughs> so what is nature? Can I say that always I uh, press on, on this key, definitely the same thing happens in the screen, uh, pops up in the screen, the same thing. It means naturally happening. Can I, can I justify this idea? So we have to know that they say, okay, uh, for example, we say, show me what is nature in the universe. What is nature? They say the things. I'm saying how the things came into existence naturally, but nature is the thing, <laughs> circular reasoning. Anyways, we have to we have to always concentrate on that. They say, okay, we cannot show the nature, we cannot show instinct. They name instinct. What is it? That we, that they say the result. They show the result. We have. It is, uh, although I, I'm not really uh, explaining it, or we have to work on it together. Although they can, uh, they can show it, but they claim that there is such, there must be such things going on in the universe. But if it is in the universe, we, we should have some uh, clue about it, some signs about it. But if it doesn't have any sign in the universe about it, it means it means it, it doesn't have any reality. But oh, it's in counter argument. They say, "Show me God." That is why we have to be very careful not to speak while we are reasoning. God is like this. God is like this. It is a bit. Uh, not uh, the way that the Muslim community speak. You know, God is like this. No, we have to say the creator of the universe must have this quality, absolute quality. Why? It is only the conclusion as a result of negating that there is no creator in the universe. So what is the source of the universe? That is why the uh, Quran says, La ilaha illahu. La ilaha illahu. Why? He is the one. Nothing of this universe has its 
qualities or his qualities. Nothing of this universe has his qualities. Can I go be, be, uh, beyond the universe and qualify it? No. I have to say this is why negation necessitates us to say that God's qualities are absolute, must be absolute, because there is no absolute here. Nothing in this world is absolute. Everything is finite, everything is transient, everything is subject to change every moment. So we, this is very important, that's why I keep uh, talking about it. So Kerry is on introducing his absolute qualities, el Hai, el Qayyum, the ever-living, the self-subsisting by whom all subsist. So Qayyum uh, is a very difficult uh, were to high means he is ever acting. Not necessarily that we should say, ah, oh, God is not dead, God is high. It, it, that is correct, literally it is correct, but very simple. We have to understand that a high means always in action. But what we cannot say that, oh, God is always in action means, means, no, God is always doing something. Again, imagination like a created being. Would you like to say? Do you think we should give a uh, pause, pray, and come back? Is it okay? Yes, that's fine. Okay, inshallah. So we will go here. And I should pause it. And uh, he's always there. I mean, he's not dead. That what we can imagine. We cannot uh, really say that God is not dead, or because we know that uh, all the life and the living conditions in this world demonstrates that the Creator of this universe must be acting. <laughs> so, and also he is the source of life. Every living being receives this quality of uh, as an animate being, living being, then it is, uh, it is the manifestation of his name of God, uh, life, life, or living being. So he's ever living. So, of course, it is a, a, a Greek tradition to uh, categorize universe, everything, material or animate, inanimate, animate beings are animals, plants, but that is not what the Quran presents. Now, I have my life. I am receiving from my creator. He has manifested his quality of El Hai, being Hai, in me, within my capacity as I am acting. So when I manifesting the name of I stops manifesting in me, in this world I call myself dead. Now, tree, tree is high, receives the quality of God as high, and as a tree, he receives it as long as he receives it, he is alive. And if he doesn't, stops, sees, seizes, being a tree. It is not a tree now, it is wood. Now, when I, when I am not receiving, when the name of God doesn't manifest in me, I am not a living being, I am a corpse. Yeah, it is a different uh, creature. Now, how about let's say what you what we call it inanimate stone or star or an atom? Do they receive the manifestation of the name of El Hai? 
according to their capacity. They are acting. Huh? They are in motion always. Nothing is stopping in action, action, action. It demonstrates that universe-wise, this, uh, I mean, practical animate beings, inanimate beings, uh, division is really false. Really false, according to the teachings of the Quran. Why? Everything is existing according to within capacity and always being changed. And we see that, oh, as I am acting, they are also acting. Do you think the stars are fixed? No. Atoms are fixed? No. Electrons are fixed? No. They are always acting. This high, this understanding of the manifestation of the name El-Hai prepares the mind to understand el Kayu. Self-subsisting by whom all things subsist. What does it mean? Do, to understand uh, El Qayyum is really difficult. At least it was really difficult for me. And also for scholars, if they are uh, serious thinkers, they find it difficult. But nowadays we can understand it even better with the help of this, uh, how the work, uh, the universe is working, the scientific discoveries. Now we understand that Existence, existence is uh, uh, sustained, and it never stops. But it never, because it is always active, but it never really gets dis uh, dis dispersed. It it keeps all uh, all it, uh, it is consistent in. Uh, secure. So existence uh, never ceases to exist and it never loses its order, for example, perfect creation, although it continues to change. But it is very amazing to think about it. The universe continues to change, it gets another form, another form, another form. We continuously age. The things continuously age, but my being never ceases to exist. It is always sustained. My body is sustained. Whether there is life manifested in it or not, still my body. Even they got rotten. Sustained, it is existence. Do you, do you follow me? It is a bit... the. Uh, not conventional way of understanding Qayyum. Qayyum is uh, Allah is Qayyum. You know, what, what does it mean? It's not easy at all. So, but when we really think about it, we understand it's easy but if we reflect on it. And after we understand that, while I am looking at the universe, I, I have to be aware that everything is continuously moving, continuously acting, continuously in motion and everything is continuously changing, but never the stability of existence, state stability of existence changes. That is manifestation of Kayyum. It means if his work is like this, sustained existence perfectly, although continues to change, but perfect coherence of the existence is protected. This is a sign, perfect sign that this absolute being is really free of any, any, any uh, default or uh, shortcomings. The perfect and never imagine it is in unimaginable which kind of existence he has. That is why the essence of uh, God is cannot be comprehensible. That is why the Hadith says, you know, uh, 
في في الله وتتفكروا في خلقه look at his work from his work you understand that his being is unimaginable because his work is like this can you imagine he himself for example can you again come back to the example of the computer that or anything else really in this world look at this if this machine is like this can you imagine which kind of engineer he is his capacities are impossible to imagine for a human capacity is impossible to imagine because uh, is it strange no understandable yeah. yeah okay so we have to understand the quality of god as it is created in a limited way no no limited way can you imagine the source of this this wonderful universe always changing and everything is perfect not only the universe in it is entirety is perfect every piece is perfect in itself how come you explain this accidentally happened the random uh, this is the result of random happenings they are crazy it is impossible if we understand this kayum really our heart will be fully satisfied that god is absolute one <laughs> impossible to imagine look at the work he is performing it is only one work and it it is a sign that uh, it we cannot really limit his capacity with the capacity of the universe can you limit the capacity of the engineer with the capacity of the computer no ask him ask his friend to see his loss of qualities and also his existence is not like the computer at all irrelevant got it so that is very important description of god inshallah we will get to know god in this way would you like to ask or any other comments anything? yes please So I have a question on, uh, on this. The when we studied Ikhlas, Surah Ikhlas. Yes. Uh, we talked about who was who was yeah. it was like by the who Allah. Well. It was an answer to a question. Mm-hmm. It was not like a direct statement. And here it starts with Allahu la ilaha, which is like more like a statement. Uh, yes, it is the same thing. Look at this. Allah la ilaha illa huwa. Yeah. The same thing. Same same way of reasoning. If you like if you like if same logic. La ilaha illa hu. But there qul huwa Allah la ilaha illa hu. The same structure. Uh, but of course there are many different ways of introducing god in the quran is more of a statement because it just goes and says god to this versus the other one was because yes. you mentioned it that it didn't come and this when you were studying surah to ikhlas yes i understand this you didn't just come with a definition yes you say god is that 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 it came more of a like an answer to a question that we all have so that's my that is in ikhlas yes that is how god describes himself in the section ikhlas yes. now in this verse god describes himself in an another way of teaching the same thing yeah same thing yes. that is why uh, we have to point that mostly god describes himself with who so if if you say for for example yakhluqu huwa yakhluqu yeah yeah so i think uh, yeah
Yes, if you see or even though you cannot see. Yeah, you cannot see. Yeah. So you cannot see. Don't expect. Feeling of, right? so feeling of feeling of watching you. Yeah. So it means uh, never imagine God, by the way. <laughs> so even in the feeling, but you are you we and we human beings are expected while we are trying to communicate with God to describe ourselves because He describes Himself in a negating way to me, because we can only comprehend God within negating way. For example, when you go, to, when you bow, what do you say? Yeah, he is the glorified by the, the really the great of the awesome one. But how do we explain this? This is what we are saying about the quality of God in the prayer. But what we are doing, pouring down. Negating, I am not great. In my being not great, I acknowledge that my creator's greatness. Again, la ilaha illahu. So we have to prostrate representing la ilaha. I am not. Do you notice that? Prostrating, uh, for example, prostration, sajda. He is beyond imagination. How do I do, comprehend this? By going and negating myself in the form of la ilaha and saying, I am not high at all. So concentrate on self, on yourself, myself. I am not high. I know I am acknowledging in my being not high, his highness contradicting. Because when you say you are high, I am a bit high, but not that much. No, no, no. Prostration. So uh, everything is so meaningful. But thank you for bringing out this. So, okay, let's study, because today, all right, let's go a bit further. It is easy, because every piece of Ayatul Kursi explains, as it was uh, in the case of Ikhlas, in the case of Ikhlas, every piece of Ikhlas, every verse of Ikhlas explains the previous one, the previous one, the previous one, until it becomes very clear for us. Now here also some sort of process is going on. First, Allahu la ilaha illahu, a very general statement, very general. God is one who nothing else like him. Not don't try to imagine him. That is what. Only he is the source of this universe, existence of this universe. General. And then comes Huel Hai. Huel El Hai. He is high. It means Hai. It means alive and also source of life everywhere in the universe. Even what the Greek philosopher says. Logic says it is uh, uh, inanimate. No, there is nothing inanimate in the world. Everything is animate according to with, uh, with the capacity he has been created. Because our minds are all like this. Stone is inanimate. No, it is animate. Go and ask a physicist. It is always acting like you and me. <laughs> but relatively speaking, as death, for example, when I don't move, relatively I don't move. Now I am active. When I don't move, and it is called dead. That is why the Prophet ﷺ likens sleep to death. Dead. Uh, sorry. Uh, sleep. So, no. Is that, uh, that sleep is like death. 
But it is it is a comparison within the universe. Like I say, for example, Ihsan is smaller than her father. I think so. Is, am I wrong? <laughs> Value was higher, bigger, but size was smaller. <laughs> now, it is this, this kind of comparison, life and death. Otherwise, as a human being, my spirit is alive always. But look, I am thinking, yeah, even I, while I'm sleeping, I know that uh, my body is functioning continuously and my mind uh, is resting, but at the same time, something going on behind it. I dream many things. I don't remember. I remember. Depends. It means uh, still I am alive and being here. Anyways, the, after understanding hi, he is the living and source of all life of the universe. Everything is alive anyways. And after especially understanding Kayyum, he is the one who keeps the uh, consistency of the existence in different forms at every moment, but still it is consistent. Okay, so it is easy to understand now. Neither slumber nor sleep overtake him. It means we can, well, how do we know? Here is his work. It will continue to working. Not like a fixed work. That human, human uh, uh, beings make the chair uh, uh, as far as the relationship between chair and it is uh, maker finishes. He is the, the chair is here, maker may be sleeping in his house. Relationship disconnected. But here we see no. This connection between the creator and the work he is pre uh, presenting to us, performing to, uh, for us here. But this is, of course, is that a figurative way of speech, neither slumber nor sleep overtake, because God is speaking to me, and human beings understand this, uh, uh, this way of speaking, analogy, you know, as if, Sometimes God sleeps. If God sleeps, the universe must disappear to exist. So as long as universe exists in a living condition, I think we have to change our mind and change it from, I'll come to you, change it from this Greek understanding of the universe. So come to the Quranic understanding of the universe. Please go ahead. We understand that there is no Nothing in the universe left al alone. So I just have a, and a question. Like the Father mentioned sleep here. Is it in response or in reference to the, for example, Christians uh, who would say something like God created the universe in six days and slept in? No, this is not a really Quran, really, really. Uh, uh, but literally, if, if you read the Quran literally, you think that is a, uh, God is comparing religions. No, he's, uh, he's using the opportunity that some people misunderstood something, yes. but it is relating to us. For, for example, we studied Lemuelit, Lemuelit, as if it has nothing to do with Christian theology. Now we have to uh, universalize the message. So this is what uh, what we see. We have to understand the Quran. God in the Quran speaks to us uh, within our capacity. We should never forget this. Yeah. Within our capacity, because God is wise one. Because He gives me wisdom as well. I know 
for example, why am I am while I am speaking Ihsan, uh, I don't speak uh, I, uh, as I am speaking to her father, which is wisdom. So God also, the source of existence of my wisdom, speaks with wisdom. I can understand only this. Um, do you think God sometimes sleeps like me? No, no, no. Don't liken him. Don't liken him to human conditions. I'm created. I need to rest. God doesn't need to rest. Why does it say slumber nor sleep? Because like to me, it sounds like that's the same similar word. Like because oh, slumber is like this. <laughs> yeah. About the sleep, but wake up. You know, some uh, tired uh, drivers, lorry drivers, or the tri tri drivers, you see that the driver goes side of the road, and of course, it makes noise because there are some traps there, and then they turn. <laughs> That's a slumber. But sleep is go to bed and complete rest. We, we see no sign of any of this. Well, it shows that, uh, so uh, it demonstrates and proves that the source of the existence of this universe in such a consistent way, existing uh, and being active, the creator must be with, uh, with no break uh, being. I mean, uh, with no nothing lacking, nothing really limited in his the being he, in his essence. So, but this is easy after understanding Qayyum. Yeah. Now, it also following will be easy. Lehu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-arth. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in earth. This samawat wa ard, samawat wa ard. In the, uh, then the Quran is used, whatever exists in this world. Whatever exists in this world. Samawat and art. Because we can imagine only art, because it is very uh, accessible to us. We experience it. And Samawat, see, there are stars, galaxies existing there. That's what we, our comprehension tells us. So we have to understand whatever exists in the universe, I have to generalize it. Whatever exists in the universe belongs to him. How do we understand this now, Abdullah? With, with using negation, I cannot attribute their existence to anything else. Must belong to him. It means must be his work. Um, well, I cannot, uh, because we have to use negation as this uh, uh, prostration and bowing. Uh, while, while we are talking about this, we said, Within, we have to express ourselves in a negating way. So I have to understand this word. Yes, really, I cannot say that this atom belongs to something else in the universe, but because it is his property. It means he created it or it created it. I cannot say that. So what is that? Whoever is the source of existence of this universe, I mean, watch out with my language. Whoever is the source of existence of this universe, this universe must belong to him. It means his property. He is a he is the originator. He uh, uh, administers it. He takes care of it. He owns it. Now, I can, but did, did I say God, everything belongs to God? Or God owns everything? No, I didn't say that. Which kind of language I use? Because we are not praying. While we are praying, we don't reflect. 
we just feel that uh, we are performing our worship, due to our worship. But while we are reflecting, reasoning, every phrase which we are using should be not based on pre-accepted concepts. This is the principle. Yeah, for example, while we are having this discussion, although in the prayer we say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, but uh, uh, all praise belong to God. That's conclusion. That's my conclusion. But while we are here in this class, we have to say, I cannot really uh, be thankful and I cannot really attribute any quality I see in this world to anything apart from the whole source of existence of the universe, whoever created it. You see, go to who again? La ilaha illa, who? Yeah, again, la ilaha illa, who? So, who el hayal qayyum? So, la who ma sama again, who? La who ma sama wati? Do you see this? Uh, the pronoun used here, I will come to you. Pronoun used here is only declaring my inability, my capacity that I am not able to comprehend it. Yes. So by negating, we ne actually understand how, not the essence of it, but we get the concept of how grand this creator is. And by comparison, how yeah. small and helpless we are. So it is, uh, yeah, even we are not small. Do you see what I mean? Our being belongs to that one. Now, again, when we say we are small, he is big comparison. No, I, <laughs> I don't, you didn't mean this. I know. I know you didn't mean this. But we hear some the, from the mouth of serious people this kind of language. And the Muslim culture is really very much blended with this kind of uh, uh, language. Mm -hmm. Because but I carelessly, they don't mean it, carelessly used. So I'm just taking the precautions not to misunderstand and get, the, uh, get our mind used to thinking in this way, saying, look, it cannot be described in this way by comparison. Although practically, uh, we make comparisons within the universe. When it comes to uh, the subject, comes to God, the creator, understanding the creator, we have to say, I cannot understand the creator, but um, I am absolutely sure that his existence is very much understandable for me to confirm. He must exist but I cannot describe his essence. Would Who is he? Would it be better to say, not I'm small and the creator is big, no, but I'm small and the universe is big and the creator made that universe. Now I have... Um, yeah, but there is, no, there is no need to go around this. Just only say, just only say, very simple, very simple way of the universe how big it is can only be his work of art. That's it. His work of will. That's it. Why? Whoever he is. As if when we say whoever he is, don't, don't, as if we are talking about something unknown. No. It is known. I can... Uh, perfectly confirm that such a being might exist, but I am declaring my incapacity to describe him. Like very simple, very, you know, simple way of explaining it. I can understand the, I cannot understand the content of infinite. If I could, it wouldn't be infinite. So simple. It's an, of course, it is just an analogy. Do you understand analogy? Not the infinite that the mathematicians use. 
absolut. Mathematicians uh, say, oh, we cannot count it. Let's call it infinite. No. In it is nature, it is uncountable. That is absolute. Somebody, somebody. So that's why I make a comparison. So let's. If we no, no, don't excuse that one. Forget about no, this. Man, we are not competing. What I'm saying is, let's say. No, we're... don't say I'm not saying. <laughs> what? Don't say I'm not saying. I meant this. No, because I feel competition. No, no, there's no competition. I know, but don't use this language. Tell me what you understood. Okay, what I've understood is yeah. because human beings, we understand things through comparison. It's just this world, yes. This world, exactly. But the creator is not of this existence. Mm -hmm. So I only have the existence to make references to. Hmm. So if we use the number analogy, let's say I'm a tiny number. I'm only the number one or two. Hmm. A star is maybe this one million. Trillion, quadrillion, what? Exactly. doesn't matter, number. Compared to infinity, you said before, all numbers... Are nothing meaningless, but I can compare myself to the other numbers in the universe and get an idea yeah, yeah. of what this um, mm. creator is capable of. Exactly, and that's how I appreciate it. Exactly. So, how sometimes uh, the Quran speaks in this way because speaking human cap to human capacity and making the comparison and uh, giving uh, the human beings to make the comparison, for example, Ahsanul Khaliqin. Is he is the best of the creators, as if there are other creators. No, that is speaking as Khalid was saying exactly. It, within my capacity, he is the best creator of you can imagine. Huh? You can whatever you can imagine. No, 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 beyond it. No, 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 beyond it. Again, never forget negation. The method of negation solves all problems, inshallah. And also, uh, using this phrase, I keep repeating it because it is very essential. Although everybody is aware of it, but not everybody is using, the scholars, using this as a criterion. Every belief matter must be formula, uh, formalized on the base of la ilaha illallah. That is principle number one, how to read the Quran. Every belief matter, I'm repeating, belief matter. Now, mm -hmm. you can uh, speak that Bakr uh, prayer is three reka, right? No, no, this is not the belief, this practical side of it, result of it. But belief matter must be formalizable within or on the basis of la ilaha illallah. But how are we going to use uh, this phrase like this? If la ilaha, therefore illallah. That is the logic of the Quran. The backbone, backbone of the Quran is this. If someone cannot say la ilaha, cannot conclude, that, therefore illallah. Right? So very, is it? The first part says, like you said, all we can do here is observe what we see. Yeah. And all we can do is say whether they are Allah or not. Oh, no, creator. creator. Don't say Allah. They're the, the source, source of existence. Yeah, the source of existence. They cannot yeah. be source of existence. Yeah. Change and, the language. You can, you can like empirically see them, look at them, and say they are not the creator. Hmm. And if we fail to do that, that's the first. That's this the first is. If if I am not the creator, if atom is not the creator, is uh, the cell is not the creator, DNA particles are not the creator. How can I explain the existence of this universe? Where did it come from? Every single uh, being. Now, this single being doesn't mean that a tree, no, 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 a tree and a branch of it and one uh, leaf of it and a cell in the leaf, a 
atom in the leaf, whatever they call particle in the leaf, every being is perfect in itself, but cannot have the quality to give existence to itself. It is subject to, it is subject to. So we, from, the, from there we conclude, la ilaha. If la ilaha, there must be a creator of this universe, can't imagine, look at every, every, even one tree is enough to be a witness to his absoluteness. So we, we, we are going to uh, stop here because this matter is extremely important. Man zelladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'idnih. Who is there that could intercede with him? Oh, man. I'm very excited about uh, studying this uh, ayah. Intercession, intercession. Everybody is speaking uh, uh, to me. Generally, people speak about it on a very shallow, I mean, very superficial way, simple way. Intercession. Prophet, intercession. he will intercede me. Or not? No. Uh, if you look for the uh, translation, my brother, it doesn't help. Come definitely next week. <laughs> definitely. I'm very excited to study this verse. Inshallah. I'm praying to God not to give me death until uh, at the end of next week. That <laughs> discussion. This is essential and fundamental of understanding of the nature of this universe. In other respect, really it is uh, common time, be here, uh, I will be, inshallah, uh, I will try my best and with your, with your help and contributions, inshallah, we will understand this universal intercession. Let's see, uh, excited. Sorry? I think that when you say that, that uh, I think it's a hadith for everyone in the state that God feels um, happy or a little bit shy when, when his servant says that. Like he feels, uh, have you heard that before? So when you say, uh, it's more than just us saying it, but it has an impact. More than what? It's like has an impact on Help me. He's saying that, that no, no, more than what? He was saying that there is, uh, it's more than just saying it, that it actually has an impact on the creator when you say it, that it makes the creator, I think he specifically said, I, I miss him, maybe I misunderstood it, but it makes the creator feel like um, a lot of mercy for his creation. Also, like how I was like a little bit shy. I've heard that. Is it true? These are uh, these are uh, different subjects. These are, of course, metaphors and different subjects. Speaking to human being according to human capacity, we should never forget that the, uh, the Quran speaks to human beings according to within capacity. Give us the examples through my uh, daily experience. Now, that is the uh, answer, and I, I, we should understand with this uh, condition. Inshallah, next week. Shafa, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Subhanaka la il melena, illa ma alemtana, in neke entel alimul hakim, wahruda wahum, en il hamdu lillahi rabbil alameen, besuratil fatiha. Assalamu alaikum, barahmatullah.